Stay tuned for some wiring tips that won't leave your next project stranded. Hi, I'm Mike here at Power Nation, and today I want to go over a few things to help you have a successful wiring project. Now, you may be thinking, who the heck is this guy? Well, I've spent the last 10 years working on top fuel dragsters and funny cars, and we've done a lot of different wiring projects from building the cars to service to them. So I want to share some tips and tricks that help us win races and championships, and that'll help you and your project. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is your wiring connections is crimping versus soldering, all right? Now, what is soldering? Well, soldering is when you take two pieces of wire, we strip them back and we're gonna heat up the wire themselves then we introduce some solder and as it melts, it binds the two together and holds once it dries, once it hardens up. Now, that makes a good connection, but it's a very solid connection and very firm and if this, is going down the road in a car, it's bouncing around, okay, and can have a tendency to break, all right? Just think about a, a paper clip. If you take a paper clip and bend it back and forth multiple times, it breaks. So that's what happens with a soldered connection that's loose like this. If you do want to solder, make sure it's in an enclosed connector like this one here, where it's supported on both sides and it doesn't have the ability to flex like it's going down the road. Now our other option is crimping, okay? Crimping, these crimping connections. I like to do the crimps because it's a mechanical connection between that wire and the connector there and you apply force with a crimping tool, okay? These are able to move around, they're not gonna break, they're flexible. So the crimped connection to me is the way to go in an automotive application just because it moves around. But like I said, if it's in a housing, the connector, it's supported on both sides and it doesn't have that room to bounce around and break. So crimping versus soldering, leave it up to you, but there's my opinion. So next thing is crimping tools, okay? Now if you want a quality crimped connection like this one here, it takes special crimping tools to get the right crimp on that connector and that wire. Now anybody can take a, a connector and throw it in a vise and crank it down and smash it, but that doesn't provide the best connection there. So for get quality crimping done like you get from the factory, you need the correct crimping tools. Now this crimper right here comes in our little kit uh, that we have especially for these little weather pack connectors here. The dies are made for these terminals here for the size, for the wire, and it crimps it, has a, the right crush needed to make that proper connection. So you can get tools like for the weather pack connectors there. Also, we've got our different array of uh, the stripping tools and our little small crimpers you can get as well. So depending on your type of connectors is gonna dictate which crimping tool you need for that factory finish. Now, when it comes to types of connectors, we've got a few different options, all right? And they get range from your most basic uh, all the way up to your high quality stuff like you get from the factory. Um, the main thing here is insulated versus non-insulated terminals. Now, what that means is these insulated ones have this blue plastic on it that kind of protects that connection there. It's a simple way of protecting the wire. But what I like to do is buy the non-insulated connectors and then make my crimp and then you introduce some heat shrink to your wire. That way you get your finished product like this and that protects the wire, it protects the connector and also it adds a little bit of stability there so it doesn't want to break the wire out. Now this heat shrink you can get in different kits, uh, you can get uh, different diameter, different shrink ratios, but the best one has an adhesive on the inside. So as you heat this up, it'll shrink down, the adhesive melts, and the adhesive seals up your connection with the wire on the terminal. That way we don't allow any moisture and air to that connection that could corrode and provide high resistance in the future. So at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that you're using the proper techniques and tools to assure a good repair. Now it's, it's funny, I've, I've been to some car shows and, and uh, races where you walk around and you look at different cars and you, and you see some crazy stuff as far as uh, electrical repairs or electrical jobs. 
on the vehicles. So we just wanted to go over some things that you want to stay away from when it comes to your car's wiring project. What we've got here are a few different ideas uh, that people have done. It gets the job done, but it's not the safest manner. Uh, so this first one here is an incomplete soldering job. Uh, maybe they had problems uh, heating the wire up, melting. It's barely attached, so it would show continuity, but as soon as you throw some current to it, it's not gonna withstand. And if I give it a nice tug, you can see it just separates. So to remedy this situation of the bad soldered connection, I would introduce a butt connector. This particular one, it's non-insulated, and we're gonna use some heat shrink after we crimp it. Strip our wire, insert in the butt connector, crimp the terminal, and then cut off some heat shrink, go around the outside of it, heat it up, comes down and brings a good connection there. Our next one here, this is home wire. Stuff you find in your light switches, your plugs at your house, it's a solid wire. Now in your car, you have stranded wire. The stranded wire, is a lot more flexible, okay? Well, these solid wires, they're not made to move around, bounce around up and down the road with the vibrations you see in your car. That's the reason why they don't provide a good foundation for electrical circuits in your car, all right? And what you typically see in your home electrical boxes, they have these wire nuts to connect these wires when they're at a, a terminal or you're bringing two wires together. Leave these at home and use the proper automotive wiring and connectors. Our next situation here, this was a case where it looks like somebody needed some power and they took the most convenient route to get that power as they tapped into a battery cable with just a screw. Ran a screw directly through the insulation, it popped out the other side, and they just looped their wire around that screw. And that'll give them some power, but once you start drawing current through that, uh, you're gonna have some connection issues. We've pierced the insulation by running that screw through it. So now any moisture, is the air, that's gonna bring a lot of uh, resistance to this circuit over time. That corrosion's gonna happen. It just leads to bad electrical problems. In cars nowadays, the voltage levels are so precise. Uh, the resistance values on all these circuits is so precise. The computer it sees all these different variances and something like that, it's gonna throw that system off. You're gonna get check engine lights. You're gonna get those electrical gremlins from something as simple as this issue right here. So if I'm needing to wire something up and I need a power supply, don't tap directly into the wire. This wire is gonna have a termination point, whether it's at the battery or maybe at a junction block. If that's where you need to get power, or you need to run your wire to that point. Now, it's not the most convenient, but that'll provide the best scenario to provide power and not compromise your system. Our next situation, it's another convenience factor. These little connectors right here, I see them a lot of times in accessory kits where somebody needs to wire up, they need to tap into some power. Well, this connector right here, it splices, it pierces that insulation, and it cuts into the wire to provide power but once it compromises that insulation, once again, it opens it up to moisture and air that can lead to that res high resistance. Also down the line, you can see we have the exposed terminal. We've got this wire that's been cut way too long as far as the, the insulation's been cut back. And you know any type of metal in the vehicle, if that happens to touch up against this being a hot wire, well, that's gonna short out and provide you know, blown fuses. Uh, it could lead to also a fire. So stay away from this. If you need power, once again, and it needs to come from that wire, say at that point, cut the wire, get your butt connector, maybe a spade connector, whatever example you want right there to make a proper connection, some heat shrink, to seal it up and not have any exposed wires on the vehicle. Over here, the last one is a fuse block where instead of taking the time to go to our proper terminals, well, they've just taken a wire Pull the fuse, strip the wire back, shove that bare wire into that cavity, thrown the fuse back in and said, hey, we got power. Well, you got power, but once again, we've got all that exposed wire, the chances of it touching another circuit, uh, moisture in the air as well, uh, high resistance. The, today's vehicles are just so finicky when it comes to those voltage values and that resistance in the circuits where something like that 
uh, gets the job done immediately, but over time, you're gonna have issues. Over here on the side, same thing. They didn't have a connector, so they just ran the wire through the loop in the middle, twisted it back and said, good to go, send it down the road. Uh, that's not gonna last, you know? If I just take a little bit of force here, pull it right out. Hopefully we've shed some light on some electrical issues and provided you some solutions that will help you on your next project. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments section and keep watching Power Nation.